I'm out of pencils. I give them out and nobody returns them. Okay. So today we're talking about, we're working more with linear equations, straight lines. We did yesterday, or day before, we did slope intercept. Today we are doing point slope formula. Okay, this is the point slope formula. What happened to the things I gave you? Guys. So it's y minus your y coordinate, in this case y sub 1, equals your slope times x minus your x coordinate. This is similar to slope intercept form. It's how you write an equation. Given the information you've got, it's another way of doing it. I actually find this to be extremely useful. I actually prefer using this one over any other one when I'm writing an equation of a line because what do you need? You need the point and you need a point and you need the slope. If you have the point and slope, you can write the equation of a line. And I find this one a lot easier than any of the ones to use. There are parts to this equation. Okay. Y sub 1 is the y coordinate. M is your slope. X sub 1 is your X coordinate. You will notice all the formulas and stuff that we have gotten so far. I have over here on the board. Sorry, I got something else for another class up here that takes a lot more room. Um, slope formula, we will need this. You will need this slope formula for your skill test today. Slope intercept, which we did, and point slope formula. Whenever I write a formula up on the board here, the stuff in black never changes. The stuff in blue is what you plug in. Everything else is exactly the same every single time. So when you're using point slope formula, you're going to plug in this value. You're going to plug in this value. You're going to plug in that value. That's what you are putting into the formula. Everything else stays the same. Okay, so that's the first thing you're doing. So for example, Problem number one, write the equation of a line in point-slope form. So we have here point-slope form, and it says a line passes through the point, negative 3, 6, and there's a slope of 5. What is the equation of the line? What do I have? I have a point, an x-coordinate, and a y-coordinate, and our slope. We just plug them into the proper place. Our formula that we have. Fill in the blanks. This stuff here never changes. All we do is plug the proper things in the proper place. So what goes here? 6, our y coordinate. Y minus the Y coordinate. You got a Y here, the Y coordinate goes with it. Our Y coordinate is 6. What goes here? Negative 5. Negative 5, our slope. Our slope goes in front. Negative 5. What goes in here? Negative 3. Negative 3, our X coordinate goes with the X coordinate. Negative 3. I have the equation of a line. I have an X and a Y and a bunch of numbers. I have the equation of a line. It's not how we like to see it normally, but I have a perfectly valid equation of a line. Now, it doesn't tell you to do this here, but on your skill test, you will be told to write it in y equals mx plus b form. And we learned how to do that yesterday, or Tuesday, sorry, I think last time we were together. We had mx plus b. You plug in the slope, you plug in x and y to figure out the b. We don't need to do that anymore. We can just rearrange this one, and it's really very, very easy. First thing, if you have any double negatives, make them a positive. So right here, I have x minus negative 3. Well, that's just really x plus 3. If I had a minus something, two minuses here, I would make that a plus. I don't. First step, get rid of any double negatives. If you don't have any, you're good. Second step, distribute the slope. I have the negative 5 out front. I distribute that. 
This side doesn't change, y minus 6. Distribute the slope, negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Easy peasy, distribute the slope. Now, I want to get y by itself because I want y equals everything else. I have y minus 6. What do I need to do next? I need to add 6 to both sides because i got to get y by itself. So I add 6 here. And I add 6 to the number. And I get y equals negative 5x minus 9. It's really, really, really easy. Distribute. And then you move the numbers on. It's two steps. And I think it's easier than plugging in the x and y and the m and figuring out what b is. I actually think this is easier to do it this way. And it's what I prefer. In all my classes that I teach that are higher level than this, I stress using point-slope formula. My calculus students, when, I, when I'm taught calculus, they write lots of equations and lines as part of that class. We go over this like the second day of school. And they've seen it before several times by then, so it's not new. But I tell them over and over again, they're going to use it a lot. It will become one of the most important formulas for them to use in calculus because they have to write lots of equations and lines. That's the easiest form to start with. Okay? I really honestly believe that that point slope is the easiest place to go from. Okay? So graphing using point slope is very, very similar to graphing using slope intercepts. Not exactly the same, but very similar to it. I need to identify my parts. I need to know what my slope is. What's my slope? Remember, what's the formula? Y minus your Y coordinate equals your slope times x minus your x coordinate. So what's my slope? It's two thirds. Y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. My slope, and I'll move it so you have a little more room. My slope is two thirds. From the formula, my slope is two-thirds. That's where it is in the formula. The other thing I need to have is I need to have my x, y coordinate. Okay, I need to find my x and my y from this formula. What's my x coordinate going to be? It's going to be 2. You have a negative 2 here, but in the formula it's x minus. It's always minus here. So it's actually, your x-coordinate is actually going to be the opposite of whatever is here. This is x minus 2. That means I'm going to have a plus 2. So what's my y-coordinate going to be? It's going to be 1 for the same reason. My formula is y minus whatever the y-coordinate is. So I have a minus 1. My y-coordinate is 1. It's going to be the opposite. If this was plus 1, it would be a negative 1. It would be my coordinates. Always the opposite. Okay. First thing you need to do, find an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Now, when we were graphing the other day, our first step was to put a point on the y-axis where the, where the y-intercept was. Today, our first thing is to plot that point first. So put a point on your graph at 2, 1. And then, just like we were doing on Tuesday, we do our rise and run. When we did it on Tuesday, we did it from the y-intercept. Today, we do it from this point. So I have a slope of 2 thirds, so I go up 2 and over 3, up 2, over 3. And there's my line. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good for freehand for me. I 
I'm getting better. I think after 20 years I'd be pretty good at it. But we'll... Okay, questions on that? Because you will be graphing. Okay, here comes one of the more difficult problems we're doing today. It's not bad though. Okay, this is a lot like the first example we did. Very similar to the first example we did. Write the equation that represents the graph on the line. I have two points, and I actually have a graph. Now, we're not going to use slope and intercept like we did the other day. In fact, well, this one's not too bad, but it's not pretty. The y-intercept, we can't be exactly sure where it is. It kind of looks like it might be 2. It's hard to tell on your paper, I'm sure, but it's not really at 2. Okay. So here's what we have to do. We need to identify a couple of things. Remember, we're using this formula, same formula, y minus your y-coordinate. We're using that and filling in the blanks. So we need to have a slope and an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Let's do what we did yesterday and find the slope of the line. Pick a point, pick a point, go over and up, and I go 1, 2, 3, so that's 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, so my slope is 7 thirds, so I have 7 thirds in there. Now I need to plug in an x and a y coordinate. How many x y coordinates do I have? I've actually got an infinite number of them, right? Because line, any x y coordinate on the line work. But they have two of them on there. They already picked out for me, right? Doesn't matter which one I use. It doesn't matter which one you use. Pick one. What would be the better one to use? I have the point negative 2, negative 3, and the point 1, 4. Which one would you rather use? Negative 2, negative 3, or 1, 4? 1, 4, because there's no negatives. Use the point 1, 4. So what goes here? Y minus the Y coordinate. Which one's my Y coordinate? The 4. So the 4 goes here. And x minus my x coordinate. X and x, they go together. Y and y, they go together. So this would be 1. Now, we have an unfortunate circumstance. Do we not? We've got a nasty, ugly fraction, don't we? This will unfortunately happen to you a couple of times on your classwork, so I want to show you how to deal with it. Because we want to make this y equals. Here's what you do. You still do the same thing. You distribute 7 thirds. y minus 4 equals 7 thirds x minus 7 thirds. That's not too bad. But you guys also have calculators. Use the calculators to multiply your fractions. I don't care. Okay. And then my second step is still the same second step. I have to add 4 to both sides. y equals 7 thirds x. Whew, okay, let's see. 4 as thirds is 12. And 12 thirds is 4. 12 minus 7 is 5. So I end up with x minus 5 thirds. I just did that in my head. Would I expect you to do that in your head? No. What do I expect you to use if you're doing that? Use a calculator. And I'm going to be honest with you. If this was a test question, I'd pull out my calculator to make sure I did my arithmetic right. I do it in my head or I do it on paper, but I pull out the calculator to make sure I'm doing the numbers right just to double check myself. Okay. Questions? 
Okay. Now we're going to do an example like your skill test. You have enough room at the bottom of the notes. I want you to get this at the bottom of your notes. Guys, get this down on the bottom of your notes. This is just like the skills test. So basically, we have two points, and we need to write the equation passing through those two points. Right? What do I not have that I need? Well, in my equation, what do I not have that I need? Slope. What can I find that I don't have? Slope. We did this on Monday. Use this equation to find the slope from the two points. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Plug them in. You have the slope formula. Plug in the y's. y minus y. Negative 5 minus 3 over 3 minus 1. Negative 5 minus 3, that's negative 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. What's negative 8 divided by 2? 4. 4. Negative 4, right? So what's our slope? Negative 4. Am I done? Yes. No, because what did it ask for? It asked for an equation. Is this my equation? No, it's just my slope. I still have to fill in the blanks. What goes here? The slope, which is negative 4. So I plug in negative 4. Okay, how many coordinates do I have to choose from? How many coordinates do I have there? I have two pairs. Do I need them both? No, pick one. Does it matter which one you picked? No. Which one do you think would be easier? Yeah, pick one and three. No negatives. I'm lazy. Could I have done three negative five? Yes, you could do three negative five. You'd still get the same answer in the end. So if I use the point one, three, what goes here? Three. Three, the y-coordinate. And then what goes here? One. One. Now, I have an equation, however, it wants it in slope-intercept form, so I need to get y by itself. Two steps. Distribute the 4. y minus 3 equals negative 4x plus 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Add 3 to both sides, y equals negative 4x plus 3. 